Remember when this article was published this past summer? Ranking the 10 worst signings of the 2021 NBA free agency. Do you want to know who is number one on this list? It pains me to even say it. And I'm not even the dude who wrote this article. DeMar DeRozan was ranked as the worst signing of NBA free agency. And that take has aged like spoiled milk. That might go down as one of the worst takes of all time, folks. DeMar DeRozan, right now, is doing things that we have never seen before. He is playing at an extremely high level. And DeMar DeRozan has just done something that not Will Chamberlain, not Michael Jordan, not Kobe Bryant, not LeBron James have done. After scoring 38 points while shooting 59.3% from the field in the Bulls win over the Kings on Wednesday night, DeRozan has now notched, wait for it, his seventh consecutive game of 35 plus points while shooting at least 50% from the field. Do you know how hard that is to do considering that DeRozan is doing it with his mid-range game? It's not like Will Chamberlain who was dominating over guys half his size. DeRozan is doing it the hard way. And this streak puts him in a league of his own in NBA history, surpassing the great Will Chamberlain for the longest stretch in NBA history. And whenever you pass Will Chamberlain on any list, you know you're doing something truly special. Before we continue very quickly, please drop a like on this video. It does help the algorithm a ton. And please subscribe to the channel if you are new. We're officially on the road to 27K. Let's blow this video up, Bulls Nation. Help me out by hitting that like, hitting that sub, plus turning on post notifications for more content just like this. Look at DeMar DeRozan's shooting splits over this run that he's on. It's crazy. 38 points on 59%. 40 points on 67%, 38 on 50, 35 on 64, 36 on 68, 38 on 59, 45 on 60% shooting from the field. Again, he's doing this primarily in the mid-range. Chamberlain reached six consecutive games with those parameters twice in his career, but both times the streak came to an end at six. And sticking to the theme of DeRozan dominating the mid-range, what's impressive is over this stretch, DeRozan has only hit four three-pointers total, three of which came in his 36-point outing against the Hornets on February 9th, and the other one coming in Wednesday's win over the Spurs. That means DeRozan has had zero three-pointers in five of the seven games during this streak. And then I got to pull up something that Mika Adams, shout out to him of Sporting News, chalked up which compares the season DeRozan is having to Michael Jordan's 1998 MVP season, which by the way, the Bulls won the title that year. Look at these numbers. He's actually outperforming what Jordan did in year 13 of his career, averaging more points, more assists, basically on par in terms of rebounding, shooting the ball at a higher efficiency from twos, shooting the ball at a higher efficiency from three-point range shooting the ball better from the line. And it's crazy because, like I said, this is Michael Jordan's MVP season. DeMar DeRozan hasn't even been in the MVP conversation this season. That's how much it's a travesty. And you look at DeRozan, he has a league leading 443 fourth quarter points, which is nearly 60 points more than the next closest player, Giannis Atatacumpo. DeRozan is also second to Joel Embiid for the most clutch points in the NBA. But his efficiency with shooting splits of 0 .541, 0 .667, and 0 .902 is simply unmatched. And again, despite all of this, DeRozan has the ninth best odds to win MVP. Ninth. How is this even possible? This man should be a front runner. In the MVP conversation. If you want to make a bet on DeRozan right now, be my guest. I mean, his odds are plus 4,800, which is insane to win the MVP award. And this speaks to how underrated DeRozan is. And it's not just the numbers. It's not like DeRozan is putting up crazy stats with a team that's losing these ballgames. You look at the Chicago Bulls, they keep winning. 
The Bulls have won five games in a row and sit atop of the Eastern Conference heading into the All-Star break, which is ridiculous considering the amount of unfortunate injury trouble this team has faced. They've been without Zach Levine, Lonzo Ball, Alex Caruso. Isn't an MVP a guy that's putting up big time numbers while making his team better that results in winning? DeRozan is doing all of that. Now, I know I'm making a very good case for DeRozan to win MVP, but let's talk about some other guys on this Bulls team that have stepped up with guys being out. And a guy I want to give a quick shout out to, Nikola Vucevic. He picked up his 34 double-double of the season with another impressive performance of 21 points and 10 rebounds. Javante Green, he's been playing through some nagging injuries. He poured in 15 points, tossing in three three-pointers. And how about Io? He's headed to the Rising Stars game capped off a terrific first half of his rookie campaign with 12 points, 6 rebounds, and 6 assists in that win over the Kings. And I know when we talk about rookies, we talk about Kate Cunningham, Scotty Barnes, Evan Mobley. Io is quickly becoming one of the most surprising rookies of this draft class. And you can argue he's the steal of this class with how well he's played in the first half of the season. Now, the one knock on the Chicago Bulls has been their depth. Do they have enough there to sustain the grueling postseason that's to come to sustain a long playoff series well they needed some much needed depth especially behind Vucevic and they might have just gotten it because they made a big move following their win against the Kings Tristan Thompson reportedly plans to sign with the Bulls the veteran center his time with the Pacers is over Shams of the Athletic reports that the Pacers will waive Thompson and he plans to sign with the Chicago Bulls once he clears waivers. You're looking at Thompson. You're talking about an 11-year veteran, an NBA champion who knows his role. And he's going to bring some much-needed winning pedigree to this Bulls team that's about to enter uncharted territory with the postseason ahead. And for a team that needs a more aggressive big man and a guy who has a in-your-face type attitude, I think Tristan Thompson could easily be one of the best post-trade deadline pickups when it's all said and done. This was a huge move. And when I saw the Bulls made this move following DeRozan's history, I'm like, damn, the Bulls are really going for it. And this is going to be one of those moves that's going to help their bench and give Vucevic, again, some much needed depth behind him. So you look at this Bulls team going into the second half of the season, coming out of the All-Star break. If they can avoid any serious injuries and DeRozan continues to play close to this level, I mean, he's not going to keep up this crazy level, but even if he can come remotely close to this, the Bulls are going to be a tough out in any playoff series. I know the East is competitive and it's tough, but the Bulls have the team that can compete. But of course, the playoffs is where people are truly going to analyze and evaluate this Bulls team, especially DeMar DeRozan, who let's not forget, he has been heavily criticized for his playoff shortcomings, especially with the Raptors. It's going to be interesting to see how he and the Bulls fare. But right now, I know the Bulls are soaking up what is going on this season because it feels truly special. If you're a Bulls fan, you haven't had this much fun in a very long time. And while we can look ahead to the postseason and talk about how this team is going to fare then, let's just truly look at what the Bulls are doing now. Despite everything they have dealt with, you got a guy in DeRozan who's playing tremendous basketball. He's playing like an MVP. I don't care what anybody else tells me. And this Bulls team, they continue to win. They continue to dominate. And they continue to look like a team that could very well be up to big things when it's all said and done. They're first right now in the Eastern Conference. If you had told me at the start of the season the Chicago Bulls would be in first place at the NBA All-Star break... I would have laughed at you probably. I would not have believed you whatsoever. And I think a lot of people can say that. This Bulls team, they've exceeded all expectations. And let's see if they can continue to do the same in the second half. And it's funny because they have exceeded expectations led by a guy who has made a career out of exceeding expectations and proving doubters wrong. And that is the king of the fourth quarter, DeMar DeRozan. What a first half to the season he has had, man unreal what he is doing and it, it's great to watch as a non-bulls fan i can say that it doesn't matter who you cheer for seeing what DeRozan is doing and to see the high level in which he's playing at 
Even Kevin Durant showed him some love after that. You cannot hate on DeRozan and what he is doing with this Bulls team right now. You simply can't. Anyways, that is my take on the Chicago Bulls and DeMar DeRozan. What have your thoughts been about both going into the All-Star break? Again, please drop a like on the video. It helps the algorithm a ton. If you did like this video, please share it as well. Subscribe, ring the bell. Let's blow this one up. Let's hit 27K. You could follow me on social media where we can keep the conversation rolling. Bulls fans, NBA fans, let me know your thoughts on DeRozan and the Chicago Bulls. And we'll see how the second half looks for them and some other teams in the NBA. This is Luca Rosano signing off. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you all again in the next video.